Hi guys, and welcome to my first studio vlog ever, where I like to share my painting journey as well as my hiking adventures and other things that I might be involved in. So we just drove back from Thanksgiving in Colorado and we wanted to make the house a bit more festive. So we got out the old fashioned Christmas tree, you know how you have to fluff it up and I was so excited to decorate it. Uh, it was, we were gone for 10 days and so uh, the kids and I were so excited to start putting things together and seeing how we can make our house more festive, uh, adding in those decorations. I even had to go to the store and buy some things because when we moved, we really didn't bring anything with us except this tree. And he's a skinny guy and he's not fancy, but you know what? He's perfect for us. I wanted to give a quick shout out to Sarah Burns Studio on YouTube. She does amazing vlogs of her hiking adventures and painting. And I just got so inspired that I wanted to start doing some of those as well for you guys. So make sure to go to her channel and subscribe. She's an amazing artist. Okay, and here I am trying to figure out, can I still do a plow in yoga? Barely. Hey guys, so done four miles so far. And it's just been a really, really fun time to hike out here. When I go hiking by myself, I find it to be so incredible. The sun rises, the sun sets, and just the colors of the trees, the stones, always create a spiritual experience for me. I find myself spending a lot of time in prayer and thanking God for all the good things in my life. And it rejuvenates me and helps me to be ready to hopefully help others and fill them up as well. Having a happy, positive attitude. I encourage everyone to hike whenever you, you can. Walking, something that gets your blood pumping and your attitude and your thoughts in a good place. Also, this is mad inspiration for me for painting. Every time I see all this stuff, I just can't wait to get home and start sketching or even maybe do a little sketching here where I'm at. Now that I completed my hike, it's time to do some housekeeping. Come with me. So today, guys, we have a few orders to package. I have some of my incentives I'm sending out to my Patreons for subscribing this last week, and I'm excited to get all those together. Come take a look with me. So I know some of you have asked what kind of a printer I use. I use a Canon PIXMA 8720 printer for my art prints. I really love it. It works great. It's not the newest thing out there, but it works really well. So here I am signing all of my art prints and then just packaging them up. And as you'll see, what I like to do is put them in a plastic sleeve so they're protected. Some were birch trees, some were florals. And then I took some of the handmade cards that I've made a while ago and I put one in each package just for a little extra gift. It might be a nice surprise when people open up the package. Uh, make sure that I do sign all these looks like bookmarks I've just taken old paintings and I cut them up in a small size so that I can write a little note just to thank them and That's something that I like to do just a little extra as well There's all my packages. I had to mail it today off to the post office. We go Okay, so now we're ready to paint. I have my paper set up here with my watercolor paints. I have this brush over here uh, this is a quarter dagger. You can use just a regular round brush if you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. A flat brush is nice for the sky. You can use a round brush though if that's what you have. And then a nice little brush for details um, would be really good. This is a number, this is a zero. You can get a one or a two. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I do have my jar of water. I do have a paper towel for dabbing my brush if needed. And I think that's all you need, so let's do it. We've got our sketch here. I have this uh, mountain here, and then these mountains in the distance with all the crooks and or all the crevices for um, our mountain, uh, the designs on the mountain. And then we'll have some foliage, some trees, and some grasses. So you, if you wanna copy this sketch, go for it. This is something that I saw we're gonna go ahead and, and wet the background as I'm talking. So this is something um, that I saw on one of my recent hikes. I snapped a photo. And so a little reference photo here is what I'm getting this from. 
And I often, when I'm going hiking or exploring, it's a little blue on my brush, and that's okay. Uh, I get so excited and inspired by the things that I see, and I love to take photos. And if I don't paint them right away, I usually kind of am not inspired by that reference photo anymore. So for me, it's important to try to paint them right away, um, at least in my case. So now I'm going to dip into our this palette with some blue paint, just a lot of watery mix of that. And we're just going to start to add in our blue paint here at the top. As you can see, I'm really holding, oh, I'm so sorry. As you can see, I'm really holding loosely with the brush and we're just gonna do kind of a gradated wash. So I'm gonna move this guy over the way, out of the way, clean my brush off, dab it, and just bring that color down. Now we, if we were feeling fancy, we could do a sunrise, sunset, Lots of pretty colors with that, but I just thought we'd do blue today. A little bit of a midday sky. And I'm going to darken up that top part just a little bit with a little more concentrated paint. So dip into your blue here. And then we're just gonna take this and again, lay it over the top just to darken that up just a bit. And like we did before, we'll take a clean brush, dab it on paper towel, and just kind of bring that color down a little bit. It's okay if you have brush strokes on here that can create a nice sort of painterly look. And it's okay if you go over your mountains a little bit too. We're just going to paint them with other colors as well. We'll just kind of let that one hang out. And as that's drying, we're going to start with our ground. So this is the desert that we're painting today. And I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to take my... My dagger brush, you can take your number six, number eight round, whatever you have. And we're just gonna add in some random colors. I do have some green on here. It's okay if you have green, there's some green in the desert too. And then this grayish color, we're just gonna start creating that first wash. So I'm just gonna kind of put in splotchy paint here and there, leaving some white space on purpose, maybe even creating some angular shapes um, where the ground is kind of going down a little bit versus it being super flat. Add in some of that now. This is kind of a greenish gray color is what I have going on here. Dry brushing where the, the paint starts to run out from your brush, that can also be a fun texture. I also have some reddish brown here, so we're going to mix that up, add a little more water. And we can start adding in some of that as well. And some of these things will blend together a little bit because this is wet, that's okay. And we can always come back, you know, with watercolor, you know, I'm always doing several layers. So we'll come back and we can brighten things up, tone things down, um, however we see fit. So I'm gonna add a little bit darker here, right in the front. And this one we can kind of blend out a little bit. Yeah, if you wanna leave some white space, definitely totally fine to do that. I'm going to grab some brown too. It's kind of a light brown caramely color and add some of that in too. Uh, I do like to have a bit darker colors more towards the front because again if we are painting with a perspective that is more realistic we're wanting to be lighter in the background and darker more towards the foreground because you can see more details and more colors when you're closer up and that's just simply the reason why we do it that way. So I'm just going to kind of let these guys hang out and blend. And then we're going to just put a really light base color on this mountain here. So I'm going to take the green that I have in my palette already. Lots of water in there. And I'm just going to add this in. Our sky is probably almost all dry, if not already. And then if it's a little dry, take some water and spread it out. I want to keep this light Again, this is our first wash over everything, and then we can come back in and add more details once this dries. But I do wanna take some more of this. There's some concentrated paint right here. Take some paint here, and just gonna kinda of add in, as this is wet, just a little bit of color here and there. So we'll definitely be able to blend some of this as we need to, but it's already doing a good amount of blending itself, which is great. I'm just adding in some color. Uh, it doesn't mean we're gonna leave it this way. I just don't want it to be one big green blob right now. And I'm going to rinse my brush and dab it, but I do want to just add in, I don't know, just a little bit of color here. I didn't like 
how smooth that was looking. Just really, to me, unrealistic, honestly. So a little bit of blending is good. And remember, first wash so we can add more things later as needed. And remember with your hills, you're gonna have shadows, you're gonna have parts that are lighter, parts that are darker. So now in our palette here, we have a lovely green, uh, greenish gray. I'm gonna take a little blue, add that in. Blue and there's some brown in there too. So blue and brown, that makes a really, they make a really great um, gray color. Excuse me. So I just want really light gray here and then we're gonna go in and add in two more different shades to create the details of our mountains once it's all dry. And so we have our light shade here and then we're gonna have a medium shade as well as a dark shade. And that's a little bit darker, but we're gonna spread it out. Share the love and remember, watercolor does dry one shade lighter unlike things like acrylic paint, which always dry one shade-ish darker. Okay, so things are drawing really well on the foreground. I'm gonna take some more of that brick brown color and add a little bit of that in here. I just wanna have some streak, con streak, some, some striking contrast with the color. And so we have that base color on there, but I wanna add a little bit more in. And I do like a streaky ground, so. That's kind of what we're doing today. A little bit of our brown um, in between some of those colors. And we can even do some of that brown later, you know, lighter over here. A little in the back. It's a desert floor, so it's not gonna be, you know, it's gonna be more in that, the brown neutrally shade rather than the green. We do have some green on this mountain. This mountain is doing well, it's received some rain recently and it's having a happy time. All right, just blending some of those colors together. We might go and add some more later too, we'll see. Okay, so we've got these guys that are drying. This one here is pretty dry and I'm gonna add in some brown. So just a little bit of brown streaks here and there too that I can kind of blend in with everything. Again, remember I'm using the tip of this brush this brush is so nice. And this will help add in some shadowy brown, darker places, you know, that will be exposed. So if you can notice here, um, I'm trying to add in just some idea of some other shades of color happening and they're all going this way. If you look at a mountain the next time you pass one or in a picture, you'll notice that it, these little crevices and cracks tend to sort of follow the same pattern going downward like this. So they're not gonna be straight down necessarily. They're just kind of at this downward stroke, this diagonal, and that's gonna get um, give you a little bit more realism to your mountains. So let's do these. These in the back are looking really good. So we're gonna go with our gray color, but we're gonna add, make it a little bit darker because we're gonna do our mid-tones, not the darkest darks, but the mid-tone. So I've got my little reference still, um, and I'm going, you know, of my pencil strokes and marks here, so I can still see them through. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and start adding in some of the crevices and the cracks here that you would have in your mountains and in, your, in the rocks. And then we're gonna do our darker darks on the shadowy side. So as you can see, I'm not doing straight lines, I'm going quickly so that my analytical brain is not gonna take over and I'm just able to add these marks without really over um, over emphasizing. So you don't want to just really think too hard about it because your analytical brain is gonna say, well, this looks terrible or I don't like how this looks. I'm gonna add a little bit darker, larger area here that is in shadow. Um, so, and then we'll have our darkest darks, which will really be in shadow, and that'll look good, I think. So, and this is gonna dry lighter, so we'll see how it looks in the end. Maybe a little bit of shadow right here, a little bit of shadow right here, and maybe a little more right there, and a little bit right there, and then, yeah, 
just be very gentle with yourself when you're painting, especially when you're learning, but I think it still needs to continue as you learn and get better. Let's let this dry and then we'll come back to the more details. Now that this has dried, I've got my gray paint. We're gonna mix in a little more blue and a little bit more brown to darken it up once again. Gray with a blue and with a brown worked really good together. You could use brown if you wanted to, that would work too. But gray is what we're going for today. That's really dark, adding a little bit more water. And then we're finally just going to go over where we put the marks and add some of this dark in some of them. We don't want to cover them completely. Um, we might go off in our own direction too and add a little bit more in some other places where we didn't add, add marks. We also want to make sure that we don't cover up our lightest value too uh, because our lightest value needs to be there and it's important. It helps everything to flow together in our mountain. So as you can see, I'm not really over concentrating on this at all. I just want to have fun and I want to get the colors down on the paper and then just let it dry and let it be. And you can always come back and you can always add more if you think you need it to be darker, but maybe go a little bit more conservative at first before you do all the stuff so that you can, you know, step back and analyze, did I do good with this? Do I need to change something? Remember, you cannot go lighter. And so uh, if you make something dark, that's it. It's dark forever. And so always start light and add your darks over the top just little by little as you're starting off. Okay, so there's our mountains in the back. I think that's looking good. We're gonna do some foliage now. I have this really lovely green paint and it's pretty dark. I'm going to start just kind of flicking that paint around because I want to add in some greenery, some bushes and stuff here. And since they're so close to me, I'm going to make them, this is gonna be that mid-tone. We'll probably just do a darker one after this, but they're really, really close to us and so I'm letting I'm letting those things be a lot bigger than they would normally be um, off in the distance, obviously. But anyway, just to state it, and we have some grasses here. They're just kind of running wild. And we want to start filling up this, this foreground space just to make it look really pretty. So as you can see, since we're filling this in with things, we really didn't have to be too, you know, worried about how our ground was going to look which you know is nice so filling that in just a little bit over here we're going to have some types of trees and so i'm just going to add in those trunks here just up against the mountain and there are trees in the desert uh, they are definitely different than say in a forest in a place where it's really humid uh, they tend to be really spiny have all these little spines which is so curious to me um and so it seems like everything in the desert has spines just for protection, I guess. I have a story where I picked up a little piece of cacti, a cactus once and it got embedded in my finger because in two different places or two different fingers because um, it literally just jumps in your skin. And it's just one of those weird things. I still don't understand it. But I don't know if it's like with body heat that it signals that and it just those spines just literally get lodged in your hand wherever you're touching it or a piece of wood we've tried with a piece of wood touched it see what happened gets lodged inside so crazy so i'm just adding in this foliage here in the background in the distance i want to add some too so let's let that dry and hang out and we're gonna start adding in other things too probably add some cacti also and you know the saguaro cactus that is so famous that has those two arms you know that is not realistic when i moved to the desert i was kind of surprised like you know what we've had it all wrong that is not how they look because that is just too perfect we're gonna do stippling for some trees in the distance this is so far away we just want to add a little bit of green in the background but not um not too much detail and so far so we just little spiky parts so yeah, the, the, the saguaro cacti, they could have two arms, four arms, five arms, and six arms. They could have a lot of arms. Just put a little bit more detail in here since we're here. 
and um, they're not uniform, you know, and they're not, they're not perfect. And sometimes they're super long and wonky and sometimes they're super short and stubby. It's really quite interesting. So anyway, in case you ever come to the desert and you wonder why things are not what you think, well, that's how it goes. So I'm just kind of taking a little bit of this green and just kind of pushing it around here. And let's see here. All right, and add a little bit more green. And these could be like little bushes, shrubs. There's a lot of shrubs in the desert, a lot of them. Just adding in those tiniest details. So now that these are drying up, they're not quite dry. Let me just try to blend some of this a little bit. They're not, I'm gonna take a clean brush and dab it on paper and just kind of blend some of this together. I'm gonna hit this up with a hairdryer and then I'll be back and we'll continue with our scene. All right, I've taken some brown and I've mixed that with my green because I wanna just do really dark, dark color to start going over some of these shrubs. I'm gonna take a liner brush, which is this little guy. It's a really thin one, has a flexible tip. If you don't have one, that's okay. You don't need it, but I do highly recommend it if it's something, if you're gonna wanna paint things like this, grasses, uh, veins for your leaves as well, uh, veins for flowers. It just creates a lot of beautiful strokes. They're very thin, does not hold a lot of paint. So you just have to keep that in mind that you have to reload your paint a lot and that's just how it works reload and then add more but it does some amazing marks so I really do appreciate what it offers to us um, here we've got those you know trees I just marked out where I wanted them and so now I can go ahead and darken up kind of the areas and I'm making them bigger now and they do have foliage on them so we'll do that too so and just really quick brush strokes, but you can use a number two if you have one, number one, number four, whatever you have. Definitely use that and consider getting a liner. So that's what it's called, a liner brush. It creates wonderful lines. So and I could, you could use that too for the mountains if you wanted your crevices to be just a bit thinner. That would be fine too. All right, since this is gonna dry, darker we might have to darken this up again sometimes it's hard to know I'm just going to add a little bit of that in there and then darken this up one more time with watercolor <clears throat> we're constantly figuring out you know what shade do we need to go since everything dries lighter to make sure that we get um, exactly what we're going for and see I'm just scribbling here I'm not there's no huge rhyme or reason maybe I'm going to take this dip it into my brick brown color here and I'm gonna just kind of run that across the ground a little bit. Remember I had said we were just trying to create some movement with some of these parts. I got a little bit too blended and I just wanted to go back and add a little bit of that, I'd call it texture on the ground. Definitely call it texture on the ground. So this brush, again, like I said, you're gonna have to reload a lot and we're doing some dry brushing so you can see that there's a lot of, of these um, marks here where the paint is running out on your brush. And that can be a really pretty thing. It's definitely not something to shy away from. Look at those creative um, little painterly marks. So I'm gonna dip into my dark brown now with my liner and get a lot of concentrated paint. And I'm just going to make sure I have enough water, of course, so that I can spread. If it's too thick, it's not gonna spread. I'm just gonna darken up one side of these trees. There we go. Super in shadow, super in shadow. Even do some of the branches too, why not? There we go. So you can really stand out. And that's the kind of the hard part here because we, have, we had some green in there and the backdrop is green. So we just go with what we can guys. And if something isn't working how we wanted, we change it up. And that's just what you have to do. And just be okay with that. That's okay to paint like that. Sometimes we have to live our lives like that. Sometimes things get a little crazy and we just have to go with the flow. And, you know, if there's a little punch here and there. We have to just augment what we're doing. All right. So I'm going to dip into my saturated paint. 
and my green. And I just wanted to do a little bit of stippling for our trees. So the trees, the desert plants, all those things are really well made for living in a place with very little water. We do get a lot of rain in the summer, oddly enough, which is kind of weird. We get monsoons, but most of the year, pretty dry for these plants and they can survive in so much you know, with very little hydration. And that's just the way that they are made. So also, again, with all those spines, there's a lot of great protection for, um, for these plants. Okay, I'm gonna take some brown and I'm just going to put a few lines here too, just to darken up some of this. But we are basically done here with our desert scene. And as you can see, just adding in a little bit of here, things here and there can create uh, a very fun textured painting. A little bit of shadow here. Why not? I feel like you can always continue to add and add and add. I know I said I might want to, want to put in some cacti. So we put in some cacti, maybe just a couple of them, one or two or three. We can put those in and then that'll pretty much be a complete painting. So I've got my green here and I have a lot of water, but I wanna dab this water on my paper towel and that way I have more of a drier brush. Um, we'll just do kind of a, a cactus guy sort of in the, in the middle here. And we will put an arm on him, that traditional arm but he's gonna have a few more arms too on him. And as he dries, we can, we can definitely darken him up a little bit too if we need to. We just want to give that impression that we are in the desert. And the saguaros are so tall and beautiful. And it's surprising how little water they need. So if they do get a lot of water though, they grow really, really big, which is crazy, super tall. Way more tall than they need to, but their arms are so heavy that um, if it's in a public place, it can be very dangerous to have them around. An arm could fall on a person and really, uh, yeah, you know? So anyway, it's just kind of one of those weird things. So they don't need a lot of water. If they get it, they will continue to grow, but it's just gonna be abnormally, and it's more of a hazard around. Okay, a few little round shrubby guys around the cactuses. Okay, and um, we, are, we are pretty much done. So this is our desert painting. Thank you so much for being here, guys. I wanted to let you know that if you wanna take your watercolor journey one step further, consider um, clicking on the link in the, in the description to my Patreon account where I have my Patreon classes. It's uh, tutorials that are full length. And so this is where I'll leave you guys. Thanks for being part of my first vlog and I hope to see you next time. Bye guys.